Hello everyone, my name is Demon Arisen, and welcome to episode 1 of How to Make Great Test Chambers. I've received a lot of comments on my Portal 2 workshop, asking me how I come up with such amazing test chambers, and I thought it was about time that I gave back to the lovely Portal 2 community by giving you tips, guidelines and advice about how to make your puzzles some of the best chambers out there, in an ongoing video series of which this is the first episode. So, without further ado, let the games begin. Actually, there is one bit of further ado because I need to lay down some definitions. Namely, which gameplay mechanics in Portal 2 I consider to be major test elements and which I consider to be minor test elements. You need to know this because I'll refer to the major and minor groups of elements a lot in this series. In my opinion, the major test elements are funnels, light bridges, faith plates, lasers, including laser cubes, laser relays and laser receivers, and the three gels. These major elements should make up the core of most good puzzles. They have tons of different uses, and can be combined with each other in brilliant ways. All other test elements, such as cubes, deadly goo, buttons, glass, grating, panels and fizzlers, are minor test elements. These elements are insanely helpful in creating a good puzzle, and their importance should not be understated. However, they shouldn't form the very core of the puzzle. They should be supplementary mechanics, which make the puzzle better, rather than being the main focus of it. Got it? Good. You'll need to remember what the major and minor elements are throughout this series. So, since this is the very first episode of this series, you'd expect me to talk about a simple, easy introductory topic to ease you into things. Nope. Instead, let's talk about what is undoubtedly the hardest and most important part of making a test chamber. The figuring out how to start phase. The first thing I, and many other test designers do when making a chamber, is to come up with a central initial concept which the chamber will focus around. This central concept will be the main part of the puzzle. Preferably, the concept should be interesting, fun and original. For example, the main concept in this puzzle from the Portal 2 campaign is the idea of using a light bridge to hold a cube in place to block a laser, and then removing the light bridge to drop the cube onto a button. The central idea in this chamber is using a laser to destroy turrets. In this one, the main concept is using a runway of speed gel to fling into a funnel. You get the idea. This central concept is crucial as it forms the basis for your test and it makes your puzzle unique. In order to come up with an interesting central concept, you need to think carefully about all the ways in which the different test elements can be used and think about how the different test elements can interact with each other in interesting ways. I'll talk about this in much more detail in future episodes. Anyway, first of all, when coming up with a good concept, you want to open up the editor and select just a few of the major elements that you want to have in your test chamber. We can worry about the minor supplementary elements later on. I've decided I want to make a chamber using bouncy gel and a funnel as the main mechanics. Now I need to think about how those two test elements work. For instance, at a basic level, Funnels can transport things, and bouncy gel is used to gain elevation. However, a massive amount of complexity is added if we think about how these test elements can combine and interact with each other in fascinating ways. For example, funnels can transport bouncy gel. Now, we have a simple central concept, using a funnel to transport bouncy gel. Here's the fun bit. Now we can add complexity on top of this basic idea of a funnel transporting bouncy gel. Let's make it so that you have to reverse the funnel to collect the gel, and then move the funnel to a different location and reverse it again to funnel the bouncy gel above the two places where it needs to go. Then drop the gel by removing the funnel Bounce into the funnel to cross the deadly goo and bounce up to the exit. This is obviously a very easy chamber, but it does demonstrate how a central concept stands as the basis for the test, and then complexity can be layered on top of it. It can be a very good idea to make this central concept the final move in your chamber, so that when making the puzzle, you can work backwards from the end of the test to the start. For instance, in this very basic chamber I just made, the final move is directing the laser into the catcher to open the door. This may seem like a very simple concept, and it is, but that's where the great thing about starting to design a chamber with the final move comes in. 
you can work backwards from the final move to make the puzzle more interesting and challenging. For instance, we can lower this part of the floor so that the exit is on a raised platform. Now we can create some stairs that are required to get up to the exit, which are activated by a laser receiver. Now we have a more complex puzzle, because in order to complete the test, the player needs to open the exit while they're in the raised section, and in order to get to the raised section, the stairs must be activated first. We started by thinking about the end of the puzzle, and added complexity by working backwards and adding steps. To sum up then, when you start making a test chamber, you should do the following. Step 1. Think about how all the test elements work and interact with each other. Consider all the things a test element can do, and think about what the test element can do in conjunction with another element. Step 2. Choose just a few elements to focus your puzzle on. Probably no more than four of the major elements, otherwise your chamber will be too complex and confusing. Preferably, the elements you choose should interact with each other in interesting ways. Step 3. Now think of a central concept or idea using the elements you have selected. Step 4. Add layers of complexity on top of this concept to expand your idea into an actual puzzle. Do this by setting out a series of steps required to complete the puzzle for which the player has to use the central concept at least once, but preferably more. I'll delve much deeper into this in future episodes. This may only be the start of building a good test chamber, but it is absolutely crucial to come up with a good concept for your puzzle before you do anything else. So, to finish, here are a couple of examples of interesting concepts to give you some inspiration when making your own chambers. Hopefully this has been a useful introductory episode. If you have any questions, feedback or insults, please write them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like having fun and feeling clever, a link to my Portal 2 workshop is in the description. But for now, this has been Demon Arisen, and until next time, bye bye.